wanted to do a run through of my record collection after I did a series about some of my favorite soundtrack titles uh, for movies. I um, saw some albums that I grew up with that um, I hadn't bought uh, the first time around, like this uh, the original um, Smashing Pumpkins album and their first uh, box set. Um, they came in these uh, really neat uh, reflective um, packaging. Um, it was a lot different from the what they originally came in. Um, so I thought this would be a good place to start out with some of the titles that I missed out on. I wish this um, uh, the first uh, album, Gish, would also have the song Ground that was uh, big on the radio. And it was released right around the same time. And um, I can understand them not uh, being on the first issue, but you know now that it's being reissued, it would have been nice if uh, that one also was on this collection. But um, it's still a good album. Um, and another um, uh, package that had kind of this really cool re reflecting um, uh, packaging was um, a Tribe Called Quest. Um, I don't listen to a, a ton of rap. Um, I usually listen to rap that's mixed with um, other uh, styles of music like uh, rock or jazz. Um, but I really like this record, and um, it really made me want to um, explore rap more because there's some great rap records out there. Um, this one also came with a bunch of bonus tracks uh, that are remixes of uh, songs from this record, and every bonus track is great. Uh, sometimes the, when you get these uh, deluxe packages, the bonus tracks are kind of hit and miss. Uh, this one, every one of them is great. And then this next one is one of my favorite um, out of my collection. It was, uh, I went to go see this band, uh, Era. And um, when I went to go buy the albums, uh, the entire band was at the merchandise table. And um, so they, they signed, everyone in the band signed my uh, these two records. So it's one of my, my favorite uh, uh, in my entire collection. And at that same show, um, um, I went to see uh, We Came as Romans, and they, um, I, I just love this um, pattern style uh, they did for their, uh, which is their last LP, and um, yeah, it's a um, great record. Um, I've kind of been exploring some uh, newer bands, and um, uh, they were uh, really good live. And um, it, the record, the studio material is more like it has more of the uh, keyboards on it. Where uh, it's live, it's more rock, but it, it translates really well. And um, yeah, I'll be interested to see uh, what they keep coming out with next. Um, and then. Um, this album, or this band is um, going to be playing at that same venue that those other uh, two bands uh, were in about uh, a couple months or so. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing um, them because I uh, listened to this record quite a bit. And um, it's their second record, and I think uh, I should probably listen to the first record more. I, I'm kind of new to the band, so I haven't had a chance to really give that one as much of a try as the second one. But, and then um, I went to see I Prevail um, kind of around that same time. Um, I like that. Um, uh, also the pattern one they have uh, here. Uh, this one wasn't the, th there was another Ed edition that had a die cut for this, this uh, lined area in the front. And, uh, but they went a little too much for that. So I decided to just go with this one that I bought at the show. Um, there's, uh, yeah, the, the whole record's great. They pretty much played everything. I wish they would have played the last track. Um, um, I don't belong here. I like, it's, uh, really a beautiful song. I wish, uh, they would have played that, but, um, it was cool to see them, to see this pretty much the whole album performed. Uh, this other, um, this is a Weezer record that, uh, for some reason, I, whenever I hear people talk about it, they a lot of people just really hate on this record. And I don't, um, 
I never quite understood that. Uh, the first single was a little too poppy for me. I, um, I, I still enjoy it. it. It's the only song from this album uh, that they played live when I went to see them around the same year that this came out. Um, the, when I went to a restaurant, I kind of heard it over the, the um, it was playing in the background. At first, I, like, I didn't even know that that, that it was Weezer because it was so different from uh, the other material that they put out. Um, but it has kind of more of this laid back feel that I just enjoy listening to in the summertime. Um, you know, I, I don't quite understand why some people feel that the band just has to keep repeating themselves every single time they make a record. Um, like what's wrong with occasionally experimenting into a different style. And I, it's always, always baffled me as to why people, um, were like that. And then, um, one of my, uh, favorite electronic records that I've been listening to a lot is this, um, album by, uh, David Bazan. It's, um, called Blanco and, um, the neat thing about this is I, one of my home videos is in uh, his new movie called uh, Strange Negotiations, uh, which is, I think is pretty neat. There's about a 10 second clip in the movie. And um, most of the movie takes place around the time that he was, uh, when he was working on this record and touring behind this album, I think it was around 2015 and 20. 18 was when it was recorded the movie was recorded and um I, this is just a great electronic record um it, i'm a little surprised that it's uh that electronic music came pretty late into his career this is only his second i think it's only his second electronic album in um probably 19 years since he's been making albums but um it's fantastic i listen to it all the time and uh, he, uh, he actually went back to his original band, uh, which was called uh, Peter the Lion. And um, this is more of a, a rock-based uh, album, but their next album is going to go back to the style of Blanco, that more electronic style. And um, I'll be excited to see where that goes. What's really neat about the theme of this album is that... Um, it, it's about, it's the album is called Phoenix and it's about how he grew up when in a, um, uh, as a kid and all the issues he dealt with when he was in Phoenix and he's going to be uh, uh, releasing albums after this that talk about the different places that he's lived or, you know, so where he moved after uh, Phoenix. And um, I just, I love that concept. I, um, I, I don't, immediately recall a lot of other uh, groups doing that, um, you know, multi-album concept type of idea. And I'm, so I, I just think that's really interesting to see where, uh, what direction that's headed. And then there, um, so this one obviously is a movie. Um, I was thinking about talking about this in my Criterion review. I actually went back and forth um, you know, putting it in the pile of things to talk about and taking it out and putting it back in and taking it out. And I eventually decided to just take it out of the pile because it's, this actually isn't my favorite um, music related uh, movie title. But um, as soon as I uploaded that video, um, I saw that they just announced that there's going to be a new uh, Bob Dylan movie that's going to be starring uh, Timothy Chalamet and that might actually work out pretty well um, so yeah it's it'll be interesting to see what, what happens there the, this one um, to me like this this movie doesn't really have much of a interesting storyline it's just kind of following Bob around and you know the musicians that he hung around with and just talking to the press and it's it has its moments. Um, the introduction is fantastic. He has a, there's a song where he, he's singing the song. Well, actually, he isn't really singing it. He's just holding a stack of cards. And as the song is playing, he's he's going through this 
list of cards with all the words that are related to the song and it's it's it's, a, it, it's actually a really inspired um like as a shorter like music video um it works very well but the album as itself is more like what i would expect to see like on a like a concert uh um footage where um you know like it's like one of the extras you know, like the, like the main reason you would buy the movies for the music for the concert and then it's like well here's all the things the the musician does kind of behind the scenes like it's just kind of the extra thing that they put on it, it does i don't know if that makes any if i'm explaining this very well but um you know um but you know maybe this is um really great for like a person that's like a really big bob dylan fan um or you know reminisce of that time you know i know that um like when uh pearl jam put out a movie in uh for their 20th anniversary um it was interesting to me as a person that grew up at that time that i, I kind of forgot about what it was like when they were like at their peak of uh, popularity and so maybe that's what it's like to people uh who are big bob dylan fans that grew up in the 1960s or i don't know so but anyways it does actually come with a pretty um um pretty thick booklet of um uh with quite a bit of material so maybe you know, maybe if a person's a bob dylan fan you know like i already said this it, it might be a, a great collection for them um yeah so um uh i guess that's all i have to say about um these titles and um i hope you enjoyed it and um Thank you for watching.